What's up, guys and gals? It's your host with the most great as always, bringing you guys another live reaction for Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 232, the latest chapter. Now, I was told I was actually going to review this one, but I was told casually, casually, by Miss Content, definitely uh, go check out his channel and his review, reaction, whatever he's going to do for JJK. I'm sure his is probably out by the time mine is. Um, definitely go check that out, but I like it when he casually tells me. You can react to this one. Reactions are good. Yeah, you know, he does it casually. Usually it means it's going to be good. He's trying not to overhype. He's trying not to undersell. He just... Reaction may... You know, do whatever you want, but... Maybe react. Maybe. You know, because sometimes you get people that are like, You have to do a live reaction for this chapter. And then you get yourself pumped up. And maybe it excited that fan... But it doesn't excite you in the same sort of vein, you know what I mean? It might still be cool, but it's like, yeah, I'm not going balls to the wall with that one. So, you know what I mean? Uh, so I definitely appreciate that. But anyways, enough of that chit-chat. Let's just jump right in. The countdown of fate waits for no one. Doesn't need no man. Uh, chapter 232, the decisive battle in the uninhibited demon-infested Shinjuku. <sighs> Gage really needs to get a shorter chapter title here. Part 10. Part 10. The big 10. Alright, so 10 chapters of this fight so far. So, boom, we see uh, there's Sukuna and Gojo, of course, still fighting Sukuna's. The Maharaga Wheel of Fate continues to turn. And Yuji's reaction on the first page. There's the second spin. Kusakabe. Two more spins and it'll adapt to Gojo's Infinity. Hurry it up, Gojo. And Gojo's smiling like a madman and he's going for it. So two more spins. And then it's going to be game, set, match. So, let's see. Of course, he's got the cursed energy around his fists. And Sukuna seemingly looks like he's running away. While Gojo is just like, boom, he's taking out entire columns and stuff like that. Of stone and uh, rebar and stuff like that. And boom, goes right through the concrete. Sukuna is still dodging. Now, okay, Sukuna jumps on one of the pillars. What's... Oh, there's Gojo with his hands out. What's he about to do? That aura, that aura is scary and... Okay, okay. He's making a he's making a little diagram. A diagram. Here's the solar system orbiting around the sun. No, this is Maharaga wheel. It's like you have a wheel with a bunch of balls. I got more balls. You, you know, you think you're the only one who's got multiple balls here, Sakuna? You think you got this? No, 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 no. And boom! Look at it all. Look at it all. And whoosh, boom! Oh, it's cutting through. It's cutting through. Okay, Sakuna dodged but these cursed energy you know balls are still going at him is this what's this red Does this be red or blue that he's using right now technically you know because like he's got the it's outside like he can hone it with yeah e either way um he's using them basically cursed energy balls flying at him uh tearing out anything that comes in contact with taking chunks out of pillars uh sakuna's dodging gojo however comes right around the back side of sakuna shocks him grabs him by the leg and elbows him in the face. Now, it looks like Sukuna got up a guard in time for that. Uh, boom, kicks him down, however, and ooh, one of the balls seemingly went and got a good gash, got a good cut on Sukuna's side there. And the wheel starts to turn again. The third spin says Kilala. One more left says Hikari. And Sukuna not looking phase, not looking that worried. Let's see. And Yuji asks, is it time that's needed for the adaptation or is it experience? Excellent question. Good question. Is it like exposure? I would argue it's almost like um, it's, it's, it's definitely exposure. Because if it was just time, then Maharaga, then the whole hiding a technique would be irrelevant against Maharaga. Right? Does that make sense? I would argue it'd have to be experienced. You'd have to show him the technique. You know what I mean? Sort of sort of like the whole Koikatsui Getsu. You need to see him release the Shikai to fall under the spell. If you never see that, you can't he can't use Koikatsui Getsu's ability on you if you never saw the release. Right? So in the same idea, Maharaga uh needs to experience the attack, see the attack happening, or feel it, or what have you. It's basically, you've got to use the technique, right? I would argue it's probably experience, but this is a good question, bringing it up. 
Oh, I see. You're asking, does it A, take the attack once, take time to understand it, and then adapt? No, that's not what I was asking. I'm asking, like, just in general. It's like, okay, this dude's in front of me. Like, if Bruce Lee's in front of me, Maharaga's wheel spins because Bruce Lee's in front of me because it takes time to adapt, but it's already analyzing Bruce Lee and trying to figure out Bruce Lee. Um, I don't need to see the attack, so I wasn't asking that, but maybe, okay, so definitely needs needs to see the attack to even start so it's it's sort of a combination one then you need to see the attack or maharaga needs to see the attack at least once and then the question is by this explanation it's like okay takes the attack sees the attack what have you then is it time based or does it need to be hit by it multiple times and it's a set amount of times i, I still would like the experience one but let's see does it take the attack once, take time to understand it, and then adapt, or B, adapt uh, after taking the attack multiple times? I'm thinking it's the multiple times one. Well, considering Gojo hasn't used any technique aside from laps, which could it be? Um, Kashimo says either option is possible. That's all there is to it. Okay, so we're not sure there it could be either or but it seems odd that the wheel started to turn the moment he took an attack but once again that could be coincidence so let's see so boom crows shattered through Sukuna taking it now I'll give him hell says Gojo I've thoroughly convinced him that all I'll use is blue okay oh he's using blue right red is the other yeah so he's using blue with this timing, he won't be able to react. Curse technique reversal. Okay, here we go. It's coming up right behind the pillar and it's red. Okay, he's about to use, so he's gonna use red. So he, I've thoroughly convinced him that all I'll use is blue. So he's only gonna use blue and then curse technique reversal, red. And Sukuna not taken aback by the looks of it. The wheel starts to turn black, and boom, he's taking the hit, he's taking the hit, it looks like, but Gojo notices something, tick. He used amplification to minimize the damage. Uh, he still took damage, I mean, look at that, but it was minimized. As expected, even if amplification can neutralize the low output of his neutral limitless, it can't fully neutralize the strength in blue or the reversed red. Okay, so the idea here is that, yeah, like, domain uh, amplification can make him survive the normal, just passive infinity or, or limitless. But it can't, when he's actually targeting you with an, with an attack, uh, it can't completely negate all the damage. All right. Higuruma says, he misread it. At this rate, it'll adapt. Okay, so Gojo's gonna go forth. And is he gonna attack again? Such sloppiness, says Sukuna. This is a really weird, like, it's a weird proportion panel here where he says such sloppiness. It looks very strange. Sukuna looks like he's got no neck or something. Uh, such sloppiness. Lost your cool after your hand was red. Let's see. I don't think that's the case. Gojo, Gojo doesn't lose like realistically gojo is always cool as a cucumber so let's see you know that red just now still hasn't exploded wait what even sakuna's like uh boom oh we got him from behind oh he's gonna blast him forward and gojo this is a good spread and gojo's just gonna like Boom coming at me, clothesline him. He's gonna completely like boom, bang, and just completely level his ass. All right, so it exploded, gah, from behind me. The building's layout. Did he plan from the start to have Red strike after making a full lap around? Oh, I don't know how he pulled it off necessarily, but it's cool, it's cool that he did that. And then, boom. Gojo goes forth, and yeah, here comes the fist. Okay, he didn't claw. I think it would. It's really cool that he like bam, and it looks like he's put his fist right through his chest. Though, did he just put that right through his fucking chest? Did he do it? 
What's with that? Wait a minute. Is this? Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. I still think clothesline would have been cooler. Like, boom, brought back, and then, like, push forward, slam, and he clotheslined him right in the face. But I think this is... If, if I'm reading this correctly, did Gojo not just put his fist through him? Because it looks like he might have actually put some of his fist into Sukuna's chest. But I think this is Black Flash, baby. Uh, unless that's supposed to all be blood. Is it, is, it, is it just blood or is it Black Flash? It looks... It could be either or. If it's Black Flash, that's cool. We haven't had Black Flash in for fucking ever. And everyone dumbfounded. Wait, yeah. Oh, yeah, you just said it, but I gotta go through it. So, Kashimo, Hakari, Yuta. I mean, everyone is just shocked. I mean, everyone is like, what? You just like, Black Flash. Gojo used Black Flash. Sakuna, all right, come on. Sakuna's done. I'm sorry, that had to take, like, what the hell? And Sakuna, oh, no pupils. Did he, did he pass out? Did he pass out? Huh? And bleeding, bleeding. And Maharaga's wheel falls out because Sakuna can't maintain Maharaga in this, like, in this hybrid state because he passed out. He fainted. He was literally knocked unconscious. Maharaga's wheel falls to the ground. And starts to spin. Oh, Gojo's like, no, 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 no. Is he gonna, is he gonna break it? Is he gonna smash it? Oh, wait a minute. Maharaga was activated. Somehow, wait, what? So Sukuna's down and out, by the looks of it, or knocked unconscious by Gojo. This might be the idea, this might be the idea they still have to contend with Maharaga when Gojo was about to get the W. You know what? I've always wondered, I'm like, I know that Gage's not just gonna straight up have Sukuna win or Gojo win. There's gonna be some, some type of fuckery, and I think this is it. Okay, so the wheel fell, but it's still... Maharaga somehow was summoned and is dragging Gojo down inside the Ten Shadows technique it looks like maybe I'm not fully understanding but okay and Maharaga is right there the two hands you're kidding Kusakabe Yuta and Yuji both yelling sensei and Gojo uh -huh. shocked and about to Boom, he pulls, wait, he pulled away it looks like. No, Gojo looks like he got cut. Looks like he took a cut. And Maharaga has been, even though he, I would argue he beat Sukuna. Now this to me just proves, once again, a lot of Sukuna fanboys out there. And I like Sukuna as a villain and stuff, but all this is proving is that without Maharaga, in Yuji's body, all the fingers and stuff, Gojo was right to say, e even if Sukuna's revived, I'll take care of him. Gojo pretty much just won, and the only reason, the only reason Gojo has taken a lot of damage is because of the Maharaga shit. If, if Sukuna didn't have, basically, he's fighting two S tiers. Gojo's been fighting a 2v1 this whole time, in, in a sense. I'm going to straight up just argue that without Maharaga, Sukuna loses no matter what. I don't think Gojo ever loses to Sukuna straight up without Maharaga. Because now, Gojo has knocked Sukuna unconscious. Maharaga's been summoned. Looks like he slashed him across the chest and shoulder. And Gojo doesn't look very happy. The sword encroaches upon his life. And that's the end of the chapter. Okay, wow. Um, Yeah. So... Yeah, this, this this is all this is proving to me, and, I, and I'm sorry for the Sukuna fans out there. I really am. I like Sukuna, but I've always taken Gojo at his word. Um, see, a lot of fan base, it, when it comes to power scaling, a lot of the fan base of any manga series is always going to, for some reason, discount the top tiers when they state something. 
just look no further than One Piece for the Garp disrespect. For years and years. Even though, top in the verse, you know, Roger himself said, he's my damn rival. Like, you know, people tried to do this whole, like, like Smoker's Luffy's rival and stuff. They tried to make it, they tried to discount Garp for some reason. Instead of just listening and taking Roger's word at face value. It's no different than Gojo. Gojo basically has stated, like, I can take care of Sukuna. I'm not concerned about it. Don't be concerned because I'm not. I took him at his word until then. No different than when uh, people tried to downplay Yuta a lot. And Yuta being my favorite character in the series, or at least one of them, t top three. Uh, Gojo said... Who's the one who kicked your ass before, Ken Jung? Before, you know that stolen body of yours? Somebody else kicked your ass in it and stuff like that. Like, Yuta's second only to me, pretty much. And Ken Jung was like, yeah, yeah, but no. No, I don't believe it. People don't take Gojo's word, but they take Ken Jaku's word. It's very weird. Power scalers suit their own agenda when it suits them, right? They listen to character A or B because it suits their agenda, but they disregard the other one, right? So... Yeah, I, I sort of feel bad for anybody has, that can't just sit back and enjoy this fight. You know what I mean? Because I think this has been a great fight. I don't think this takes away anybody's top tieredness. Sukuna is obviously an absolute beast and a monster. So is Gojo. It's just painfully clear to me. And this doesn't take away the storytelling, the fight, Sukuna, or anything like that. But it's obvious to me that without Maharaga and, and Megumi's body, Sukuna straight up loses to uh, Gojo every time. Every time. It's only gone this far because of Maharaga's uh, involvement. So, I mean, take that what you will, guys, but that's the way I'm seeing it. Now, a lot of you, you know, might be, who are big Sukuna Power Scaler fans, might be like, L take Griever, total, total L, that's not how it is. It's pretty much black and white to me, boys. Pretty much black and white to me. Quite literally. You know, a black flash, boom, Sukuna's been knocked unconscious. Gojo won in the 1v1. He's now in round goddamn two against the 2v1, right? So, yeah, it's pretty obvious to me. But what did you guys think? I think the chapter was solid. Black flash for the end. A black fat. Blah, blah, blah. Black flash finish. Black flash finish. Say that five times fast. Black flash finisher. To knock out Sukuna and then have Maharaga steal the show at the end of the chapter. Mwah. Chef's kiss to that. Really good chapter. What do you guys think though? Let me know down in the comment section down below, of course. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as always. We'll see you back here for chapter 233. I'm looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too. We'll see you back here next time. Sayonara, everybody.